quick. Bamford may own this lot, but remember, I'm the one you answer to. Oh, come on, Tucker. Do us a favour. Like what? What do you want, Creamy? You got half me bed and now you want me bed clothes, is that it? I need a blanket, not the duvet. Oh, I can keep that, can I? Oh, come on, Tucker. There's a chronic draught down here. Yeah? It practically had me pinned to the wall. Well, so shove something under the door. I have. Your jacket and trousers. You liberty-taking git. <laughs> had you go in there, didn't I? Don't panic. They're mine. But I'm still freezing, though. I'm never gonna get warm in this sleeping bag. Don't know what you're bothering about anyway. It's time to get up. Yeah, Tucker. One of the few advantages of being out of work is that you can ignore irritating little gadgets like that. The last thing you need is something to keep reminding you of the time. Now, tell me how I ignore that. Here, look, five minutes, that's all. We can't both use the bathroom at the same time, can we? Do you know what time it is? Come on, shift yourself. Oh! oh I'm sorry. I, I thought you were. Sorry. Is this in the bathroom? Sorry. Oh, no. More aggravation. Five minutes late. The way he goes on, anyone to think it's a cat or a fence. Job. You must be totally insane. Why? Well, I have to work here part-time so I can afford to stay at college. For someone to give up college and come and work here full-time. You've got to be mad. I don't think it's insane to get sick of being shunted along on the academic conveyor belt. Oh, is that what it is? Well, how would you describe it? You get your O-level stamp of approval, you go through the sorting room to collect your A-level stickers, and arrive nicely parceled up for delivery onto some degree course. And there's me thinking that education was broadening my mind. You don't mean to sound being conned. Well, if you're not, you're unique. Most people I know are so busy keeping their heads down because of the next batch of exams that they don't have time to actually sit up, look round and expand. Wish you'd tell my mum that, because she seems to think that students have got nothing but time. We're always worrying about it. In fact, she's under the distinct impression that we do nothing at all. Nothing that matters anyway. Yes, well. I suppose that's understandable, really. I mean, she's never been in that position to get sneery about going to college. You know, I've never had that choice. She hasn't missed much. You've got to admit it can be a narrowing experience. Oh, yeah, that's why students like you really like to get stuck into jobs like this, don't they? I mean, they really think they've got to grips with life if they've waited on tables or dug ditches for a few weeks. And then it's all back to college to congratulate each other on how well they got on with real people. Well, if people like me don't make it through further education, waiting on tables in a dump like this can be for life. That's what I call a narrowing experience. Sarah, why do you keep going on as though I'm still a student? Because it doesn't matter, does it? Daddy will have you back. He'll bail you out. Oh, that's so cliché. You can't believe that. Oh, but I do. That place you're living in, what's the rent? It's more than what you can afford and what you earn here. How do you know? Well, if it's not, clear me a space and I'll move in with you. You might not get on well with Mummy and Daddy, but at least you can snipe at one another from a civilised distance. Me? I'm locked in the same cage as mine. I mean, how much longer is he going to stay? It's been four nights. I know, Mum. Don't think that I'm unsympathetic. I'm not. But surely he's got a home of his own. I don't know. He's never really mentioned it. Well, ask him about it. Oh, if he's got nowhere to go, I pity him. <laughs> he can't stay here indefinitely. This isn't a refuge for down and outs. Yeah, anyway, what's with all these? You thought you liked them? No, I said I did, but I mean, that was three weeks ago. We've had nothing else since. Well, I've got them in now, so you'll have to eat them. There's enough in that cupboard for a siege. Never mind. Let your friend loose on them. They won't last long once he gets going. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if his parents aren't out on the streets as well. 
You must have eaten them out of house and home years ago. Ah, oh, morning, Mr. Jenkins. Oh, sorry. I'm forgetting. We've already seen each other today, haven't we? Right, I'm starving. Look, about earlier, I'm sorry. Look, there's no reason for you to be sorry. It was me that came in looking for a fight. No, I shouldn't have talked to you like that. I know how much it means to you to stay on at college. It's a fantasy. Unless I can get away from home. Why? Well, there's five of us in a three-bedroom flat, which means that there isn't a lot of room to spare. So everybody's just getting a bit fed up with my work cluttering up the place. But where else can you store it? I don't know, but unless I find somewhere by the end of the week, my mum's going to give it all to the dustman. That's terrible. She'd do it and all. There's an empty loft in the house where I live. It's dry as far as I know. Make a good storage space. Do you think I could? I don't see why not. <laughs> Creamy, when my mum whipped that duvet off, you weren't, you know, what? You know, what, in another man's bed? Do you take me for a cad, sir? Relax. She didn't see anything she shouldn't have. It was just a shock to find me there instead of you. And don't you want those? Help yourself. You've done half the packet as it is. True. Yeah, but have you ever stopped to think about the camel as it goes on life's journey? You know, that poor beast carries its load over miles of barren and hostile terrain, never knowing when it's going to come across the next little oasis. So? So? It stocks up when it can. Eight gallons of water at a time. I take your point, but I only think it's fair to tell you that your attempts to impersonate a camel are giving my mum the ump. You doing anything with your van later on? Why? You got me a customer? Someone else wanted my services for free. She's a friend. And I'll pay the petrol. Oh, that's rather large of you. I'm trying to run a business, man. Leave this to me. We'll meet you back at your place later. Business. Yeah, business. I know you shouting about it to the tax man. I'll do a deal. Find me another electric fire and you can use the van. I'm not driving that death trap. I need a driver as well. If I don't get a few more kilowatts trained on me, the driver will be a stiff within the next half hour, you dig? OK, deal. You've left out the goose pimples. Oi! Open it up. All right? I want to know where you were going. Broad daylight. I mean, do you think I'd go burgling in broad daylight? It has been known to happen. Sir, you don't have to tell us. You've come for a little trip to the station. Come on, we kick off in half an hour. And today you can take your kit home to your own house. He's been stinking out the boot of his car for the last week. Do you know him? He's our centre-half. I'll tell you what, though, he needs logging up the way he plays for us. Still, we've got no-one else, so we're lumbered. You've got a car, have you? Yeah, spot round the corner. Oh, yeah, and his kit is in his car. Not half. It's nearly escaped three times. You want to smell it? No, I don't. Go on, get out of it. Jenkins. Cheers. Well, comes or something. When you can't walk down the street unmolested. Thought I was served for a little ride there. That's how they got brains, you know, on the stop and search. Yeah, what happened to brains? I ain't seen them around. No, you're not likely to for the next couple of years. 
He's tubbed up three to a room in Wormwood Scrubs. Yeah, all right. I know what you're thinking. But this is strictly legit. Mind you, I've had a few offers put my way. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and the way things are going, they're getting more and more tempting. If I don't get Thieving's something Thieving's so... a mug's game, Ralph. Oh, I don't know. It wouldn't be so bad, but for the prison. Prison? I thought of that. Don't bother me. I mean, what would they be taking away from me? No. I found a way of earning some money without stepping outside the law. <laughs> the drinks are on me. Oh, uh, four cups of tea and a chase around the counter, please, darling. <laughs> oh, put them away, will you, Al? It's embarrassing. Not to mention a waste of time. Nor haven't you got to the page that mentions the age limit yet. It's 18, and it's the same as the yachts. This is for school leavers. 16 year old, 17 top weight. But as far as being out of work's concerned, you and me were veterans. We don't count anymore. Sounds as though you've been well into it, Ralph. I have. You're joking. You might not understand, but you. You'll give anything a try when you're desperate. Well, I'm not that desperate. You won't catch me in a pair of overalls. Me neither. Evil things. Overalls? Yeah. You wear them long enough, right? And they become like a second skin and take over your whole body. It's true. You look at those old boys, right? Been wearing them for years. Their bodies are sort of sagged. You know, like dropped into all the loose folds. No, you won't get me into overalls. Sounds like a straight jacket would be more in order. Oh, never mind your sanity. What about yours? What about it? Well, we're waiting to hear how you plan to get your hands on all this money without actually licking it. Oh, yeah, look. Cheers, darling. I don't think I know you, do I? But uh, does one require a formal introduction? Uh, Ralph Passmore. Susan Chalice. Oh, super. How are you? Snotty cow. They're all the same. Now, now, Ralph, just because Alison's upset you? Yeah, well, don't tell me Shane upset you as well. That's a long time ago now, Ralph. Anyway, what can you do about it? I thought I'd get out of that geezer she's knocking about with him, kick you from here to kingdom come. Well, that's no answer. Yeah, I oh, know. I'll stand more chance of turning her off him if I wrecked his motor and tore up his clothes. They make me die, these blokes. I mean, they're old, isn't he? 25, 26, plenty of dough. I mean, you'd think he'd be able to take his pick, wouldn't you? Get out of it. If you was in his position, I'd have some power to be in a passenger, sir. You're wrong. And I'll prove it to you when I've trumped his BMW with my Porsche. <laughs> you wished. And what are you going to buy it with? The money you earn from this? Yeah, I'll give her a blast of exhaust fumes, all right? Earn £400 a week plus. Absolutely no selling info. You know what this is all about, isn't it? Yeah, it's a salesman's job, and I'll do well to earn half that amount. Still, 200 quid a week to do me, and it will keep me on the straight and narrow, which is more than I can say for Mr Watson's prospects. Tommy? Hmm. He's falling in with bad company, Tucker. Yeah, but he's got a job. What's bad about that? Yeah, it's what it might lead to. Still, I'm saying no more about that. Uh, pay for the teas, will you? I've got to go and collect some gear from the cleaners. Oh, oh no. This is never still on the road. Isn't it about time you handed this over to the British Museum? They're about the only ones who'd entertain it. It's not fit for the scrappy. Tony ever do any work on it? You know what he's like? He talks about the cosmos and the grand order of things. But when it comes to nuts and bolts... You're not a lot better. It ain't my van. No, but the passenger seat's been well worn by your bum, hasn't it? Tucker, you're a bit of a whizzo with the old infernal combustion engine. True. Once I get my fluence going, there are very few vehicles that can resist me. Yeah, well, uh, any chance of getting your fluence under this bonnet and casting a spell? It just so happens that I do have a break of my engagements this afternoon. Wait. Let's have a look. You pair of burks. Can't you see what's wrong with this? It. We're not all mechanically minded. But it hardly needed Einstein to work this one out. Einstein? Who with motors, was he? Who? Man, are we ready to blast off? Give it a turn. <laughs> Bit of encouragement needed here. Top 
blocks away. If you chaps would be so kind. Okay. Come on, move the pins, man, before it changes its mind. Purring like a kitten. You've definitely got the touch, sucker. Yeah. What's up with your legs? <laughs> I wouldn't swear to it, but I think your engine might well be in need of a deco. <laughs> <laughs> This'll do us. Where are you going? I thought you were going to stay and give us a hand. Get up, yeah. We've got to go and see a man about a pair of jeans. I'm not a hard man. Any cheaper, I'll be giving them away. My pair for the old man. Nice snug fit, making bulge in all the right places, they will. You ain't seen my old man. Buy a pair for the boyfriend, then. <laughs> Hello, Tucker. You love it, don't you? Come to take up my offer, have you? <laughs> you won't get these at anything like the prices anywhere else. Yeah, save the spill for the old dears, Tommy. It's true, though, you better jump in while stocks last. Yeah, I'm a bit skint at the moment. I might have to wait till your next consignment. Well, you can do that if you want, but I'm not, I'm not sure what our next consignment might be. I mean, skirts, blouses, anything. Come on, Tommy. This ain't a back of the lorry operation, is it? No, nah, look, the stuff we get is slightly flawed. That's how we can knock it out so cheap. I can't see anything wrong with this. No, amazing, isn't it? You never tell me you didn't know, eh? Now then, you two boys gonna spend any dough? Simply not take the walk. We're here to see our mate. No, no, he's got work to do. Yeah, well, uh, see you later on then, Tommy. Not tonight, though, Tucker. I, I said I'd go down to the club. The club? Yeah, you know, have a few of the chaps. Suit yourself. your van and load my stuff into it and you haven't even asked him his name. Creamy. Well, Christopher George Eames, if you prefer. Oh, hello, Creamy. I'm Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Yeah, now that we know who we are, tell me something. Who are they? Junior and Adrian. Junior? The white boys, Junior. I'm Adrian. AD for short. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I thought... Don't worry about it. Everyone makes the same mistake. He loves it. Still say there was no need for him to start getting heavy like that. I mean, all right, we weren't buying anything, but what is the arm in talking to Tommy? Depends what you happen to be talking about. It was obvious to me he thought we were getting a bit too nosy. So you reckon Ralph could be right? About Tommy being in with bad company. Did you see him, though? He was in his element. Tommy and that job were made for each other. Imagine it. Not only having work for something you really enjoy. You sound envious. Don't be a burk, Al. Who sound bleeding well envious? Yeah, which landing did you say it was on? Second one up. That's what I thought you said. I'm not getting any answer. Open up. Rent man. There's nobody there. Small world. Oh, the cafe. I didn't realise it was you. It was supposed to be knocking for. Well, I couldn't get any answer. Is this Sarah's stuff? Yeah. Don't say you didn't hear us. I did, actually, but I was a bit reluctant to come to the door, as the old man who lived in there died a few weeks ago. And his spirit haunts the staircase. No. Something a lot more fleshy than that. <sighs> Burglars. The room's been ransacked twice. We'll be snatching his body out of the grave next. 
They must have read about the death in the obituary columns and then came along to see what they could get their hands on. Toe rags. I bet you had nothing worth taking either. That's right. All this belongs to the landlord. But it didn't stop them making a second visit. I mean, well, I'm permanently on edge now in case they come back. You don't mind if I check up while you're here? Only I don't like coming in when I'm on my own. So, how come you got the key to this place then? Well, the landlord asked me to keep an eye on it. He told me I could use it if I wanted to. Well, don't he come around himself? No, he's lost interest now. He's about 80-odd. A nice man, but a bit past it all. I suppose it's quite probable that he won't bother to let this room again. <laughs> I've never met anyone as cut as you. Hey, cool it, man. It's you who can't carry someone to walk up the stairs at the same time. They're always like this. Hey, it's William Junior. This is Susan. Hi. Where do you want the staff in? In the loft. The loft? It's only another flight. Oh, no! <laughs> Nice. It's dry ish. She's even got a light bulb. Right, let's go and see if those two have recovered. For the kind of a thought and the stamina. Um, you know, I was thinking now, uh, you're going to have no wet paint now, will you? I mean, the window that size is no good. It'd be a lot better if you could leave your stuff where it was at the minute. Yeah, it would, but I'd have to pay rent for that room. Oh, no, maybe not. Here, look, you don't like that room being empty, do you? And you'd feel a lot safer if it was being used by someone you knew. Yes, but it's not my place to go letting the room out. No, I'm not talking about letting it. You've been asked to look after it, right? Now, all that'd be happening is you'd be getting Sarah to help you. Uh, and me. What have you got on your mind? Look, I just thought that if uh, Susan agreed, I could move in here. Here? To live? This isn't meant to be lived in. Look, I've got a feeling that before too long, I'm going to be back on the streets again. Now, compared to that, this place is paradise. Look, I won't be any trouble, I promise. And if the landlord does decide to let the room again, we'll move Sarah's stuff straight up here and I'll get out as quick as you like. Please? Tucker! Oi, Tucker! Good news. You're moving out. You're psychic. You mean you are? I've just acquired a penthouse suite. Oh, well, it's at the top of an house anyway. Well, double celebration then. Stu's broken his leg. Yeah, pay no attention. He's a good lad at art. He rides with firm motorcycle couriers. Another little prank. How long do you reckon before you're back at work then, Stu? Could be six months. Six months? Blabbly. Yeah, I bet he's a laugh a minute at funerals. Hey, is your firm paying you sick money? Oh, you're joking. He said I wouldn't even have a job to go back to unless I could find someone to stand in for me while I was away. Oh, so that's why you're here. Tucker's going to keep your rev counter ticking over while you're on the mend. Creamy, I've got a job. Yeah, well, the prospects don't look too good, do they? It don't matter. I'll be back on a bike again, and there'll be a wage packet at the end of the week, and that's the only prospect I want. Way! Tucker's luck brings him back to BBC Two next Tuesday at the same time, and next this evening, Sparks. Some of Tucker's real-life contemporaries give their tips on how to succeed in business.